Your heart is not functioning at full capacity any longer. It's shutting down. Her heart is failing, isn't it? You must be so scared. Surgery scheduled for next month. Less than a 20% chance to live. <sighs> She's getting weaker. Everyone is getting concerned. You are looking even weaker today than yesterday. In moments like this, it's better to turn off your mind. Don't think, don't feel. Just listen to the sound of my voice. Good girl. I'm not going to let you die. I promise. I'll be waiting for you. I'm about to make your dreams come true, Miss Lovingston. If I could, I would gladly live in the dawn and the dusk with you. My star, my heaven, my dream. There's one person in this world that I can't stand to lose. It's you. Hello, hello everybody, it's Girl Got Game, and welcome to another Gander video! Today, I'm checking out the visual novel Glass Heart by Eternal Love Studios, and uh, you probably got a pretty good idea of what we're in for with this game, just from the little trailer that was at the very beginning. So, I got an email about this game maybe three weeks ago by the lovely Corinna. She reached out to me via email and offered me a key. And I took a look at it and I was like, this looks beautiful and I love the story. Um, the story for this is Mira, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, the glass-hearted girl has lived her life in hospital rooms. Years of fighting to survive has resulted in a bittersweet outcome. The surgery that could save her life only has a 20% chance of success. Failure means death. With one month until the operation, the glass-hearted girl sets out to experience something worth living for. Will she find the strength to survive, or will her heart shatter? So there you go. As you can see, we also have some boys we can romance as well. So we're just going to jump in and uh, hopefully not die. Maybe find some love. Let's see what happens. Glass Heart contains scenes that may be disturbing for some players. We want you to have a pleasant and comfortable experience while playing. Well, thank you. That's why we have safe spaces throughout the game. With safe spaces turned on, you will be notified of a potential trigger and have the option to get a summary rather than playing through that moment. Would you like safe spaces to be turned on? Um, you get the option to have a summary. I think I'm good, but that is a nice option to have. I'll just jump in. But that is a really nice option to have. A glass heart. This is often what my heart is compared to. It's weak, fragile, and must be handled very delicately. Because of that, I have lived my life in a hospital room, watching the world through my window. The doctors tell me that it's to keep me alive, but is this really living? Man, I love the interface and the art so far. It's so nice. The clatter in the hallway and squeak of the nurse's sneakers on the floor signify another busy day. My nails are a normal color today. That's a good sign. I can't help but smile out of relief. Good morning, Mira. I brought you your breakfast. How are you feeling this morning? Um, better than you. I've got eyes, at least. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> no offense, Miss Nurse. I'm sure you're very lovely. Good morning. Much better than usual, actually. That's great to hear. Your skin does look a little more vibrant today. Thank you. The nurse smiles kindly at me and grabs the blood pressure cuff. It was normal procedure. 
However, as she took my vital signs, I could see the slightest hint of a concerned expression. When you spend years in the hospital, you pick up on the subtle things. Well, I'm finished up here. Dr. Hartman will be coming by to see you shortly. The nurse left the room slightly faster than usual. Another great sign. Amidst the sound of beeping machines, the chirping birds sing freely outside my window. They remind me of a freedom that I have never known. It must be a busy morning for Dr. Hartman since he's taking so long to get here. I think to myself as I switch on the TV. On the screen is a handsome man along with a blushing female news reporter. So tell me, Mr. Roten, who is this lucky individual who will have the dreams come true? If I'm not mistaken, I think you're one of the romanceable boys. Now, if I told you that, it would ruin the surprise. However, what I can say is, I will make that person the happiest they have ever been. The news reporter visibly swoons, but does her best to keep a professional appearance. You heard it right here, everyone. Some very fortunate person will be made the happiest they have ever been by billionaire Nathan Roten. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Roten, and I look forward to finding out who this mysterious person is. Thank you for having me on here, Hannah. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> I'm sure. Coming up next, your daily weather forecast with Dane the Rain Man. Stay tuned after the break. That's the perfect name for a weather for forecaster. Dane the Rain Man. The station begins its classic outro music and then cuts to a commercial. I wonder who that lucky person will be. A knock at the door captures my attention. One of the other nurses comes in to check on me. Hey, Mira. I just wanted to come in and check on you. Are you feeling okay? Yes, I'm doing well. I was just watching TV. Apparently, a billionaire is offering to make someone very happy. Oh, you must be talking about Nathan Rilton. All of the nurses were talking about him. Really? Yes, apparently his company is affiliated with our hospital. I'm not sure how, but they have connections way up the chain of command. That's surprise. <laughs> A heart palpitation hits me. Are you okay? Never better. I'm fine. Just a little palpitation. No pressure or pain. The look on her face is a little concerning. Oh, okay. Just be sure to let me know if you need anything. I will. I give her my best smile and try to ignore her concerned expression. With that, she walks out the room. As soon as the door closes, I lay back in my bed. I want to say, I really um, appreciate that we have the sprite of our MC in the corner, and we get to see her emotions on her face. Very nice touch. It's no use worrying, but that's easier said than done. True. The morning continues to drag on. It can be so boring living in a hospital room. With nothing better to do, I reach for the remote and turn on the TV. When turning on the television, a performance is the first thing I see. Hello, music? Hello, detective? It is a concert performance of the hit singer, Life. He's dancing effortlessly and pulls a girl close to him. How do I detect a hint of blush on our MC's cheeks? Wow, he looks really cool. His performance is mesmerizing. I love the dance they are doing. His song is really catchy too. Agreed. It's no wonder he's so popular. I feel slightly envious. He has the ability to draw so many people into his performance. No doubt he would be able to make a huge difference in the world. I wonder what his life is like. It's probably amazing. A knock sounds on my door and takes me from my thoughts. Come in! I quickly turn off the TV and focus on the door. I'm sorry I'm late. Jay! Almost all of the stress and worry I felt evaporated the moment I saw his smiling face. Jay requested to be my doctor when he began working here three years ago. Aww. He's the youngest physician to ever get hired here, but he is one of the most skilled. 
The fact that he was granted permission to take over my care is a testament to his abilities. I have no doubt that he's the reason I'm still alive. Aw, that cute smile on her face again. He's always been there for me. He's been the emotional rock that I've relied on since meeting him. He makes me feel like a person rather than a patient and breathes life into this cold hospital room. From the moment we met, he has insisted I call him by his first name. Doctors usually value their titles, so I was hesitant to be informal, but he was persistent. I'll never forget the elated look he gave me the first time I willingly called him Jay. It made me very happy, and it's one of the many reasons I love being around him. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling much better, but judging by how the nurse looked when she checked my vital signs, I can only assume that my body is tricking me. Jay gives me a smile, but I can see a small flicker of sadness. If you are feeling good, then that is what matters. He rubs my head affectionately. No, I'm weak to head pats and things. Now, let me take a listen. He places his stethoscope against my chest. I swear that I can feel the slightest trembling against my skin. Is he shaking? After a few seconds, he moves back for me. Well, what's the verdict, doctor? I intentionally add a playful tone to my voice. She's still ticking. Good. Well, that's good. I know what that comment truly means, but I'm not going to ask anything more. I'm just going to play it off and smile. Ooh, new pose from our girl. Um, Jay, I've been on bed rest for the last week. My toes are all tingly, and it's not due to poor circulation. Probably. Anyway, would it be okay if I walked around a little bit? He chuckles softly at my statement. As long as you don't overexert yourself and stay in the hospital. Roger that! I went ahead and brought you your medicines. Take them, rest for about an hour, and then you can walk around for a bit, okay? Sounds good. Thanks, Jay. I take the cup of pills from his hand and swallow them down. I've always hated pills, but after taking them as long as I have, it's basically the equivalent of drinking water for me. You are very welcome. I'll be back later today to check on you. If you need anything, you know where to call. Have fun on the rest of your rounds. I give him the peace sign. Jay gives me a slight laugh and ruffles my hair again. Ugh. Weak. My smile disappears as soon as he leaves the room. Twice. He ruffled my hair twice. That's not a good sign. I'm not going to focus on it, though. Worrying about it won't change anything. So, I'm just going to look forward to my walk. 59 minutes to go. An hour passes and I finally get clearance to walk around. Even though I said I felt great, I can feel the toll of my own body weight on me. It's not overwhelming, but I do feel heavier than usual. I walk the halls and see all the people and nurses. Hospitals are such strange things. In the same building, one person is happily bringing a baby balloon and stuffed teddy bear, while another family is sobbing and comforting each other over the loss of a loved one. Hospitals are a place of life and death. And the in-between. Hello? I was so caught up in my own thoughts that I didn't notice the male figure quickly walking through the hallway. Can I take a look at your sweater by any chance? Whoops, that's not the right button. Whoops, that's also not the right button. <laughs> um, hmm. I can't seem to find a button to make this go away. The typical mouse wheel and H are not working. Well, I guess I'll just have to be ignorant as to what your sweater truly looks like. Ah! <laughs> Apparently we both didn't see each other because we collided and ended up on the floor. Uh, ow! I feel the pain racking my body and the slightest burn in my chest. I look up and see the person I bumped into. He's already standing back up. Are you okay? Did he just... Hey! He's just going to leave? How rude! 
I don't think I've ever seen him in the hospital before, but if I ever meet him again, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Are you okay, miss? Mira, are you okay? Let's get you to your room. No, I'm okay. No, let's get you to your room. I'm sure you are hurting after that fall. Rather than hurting, I'm more upset by the fact that my rare walk got shortened. I'll give that guy a piece of my mind. Who does he think he is with his good-looking mask and his interesting sweater that made me press wrong buttons? Bleh. The nurses rushed me into my room in a frenzy. They all seemed very concerned, and it wasn't long before Dr. Moran entered the room. Whoa, hello, doctor. Dr. Moran is another cardiologist at Wellston. She's been here for around two years and frequently assists with Jay's patients. I heard one of the nurses mention that Jay is performing an emergency surgery and wasn't able to come. I'm relieved that he wasn't able to rush here. Honestly, I think all of this is a bit excessive, but they must know something I don't to be acting this way. Dr. Moran moves her stethoscope away from my chest and wraps it over her shoulders. Okay. Thankfully, that fall didn't do too much damage. Though, I do recommend you rest the remainder of the day. Thank you, Dr. Moran. You should be more careful with your body. Otherwise, Dr. Hartman will worry unnecessarily. My shoulders scrunch up at her admonishment. I wanted to say that it wasn't completely my fault, but that would be childish. I should have paid more attention to where I was going, then this wouldn't have happened. I know. I'm sorry. As soon as Dr. Moran and the nurses leave, I let myself sigh. <sighs> well, the walk was fun while it lasted. Back in the cell. Almost immediately, the door opens again. Are they here for more checkups already? I hope it isn't Jay. I don't want him rushing here because of my mistake. <laughs> it's Will! Hi, Will! Relief floods over me when seeing my childhood friend and, well, best friend. Hey, Trouble. <laughs> you just love that nickname, don't you? <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's pretty accurate. He playfully pokes me on the forehead. Rude. I smirk at him and poke him in the stomach. <laughs> You're the troublemaker. You're also here earlier than usual. Did your class get canceled? Class let out early. I think our professor has a date or something, so I figured I would come by and see you. I won't complain about that. How you feeling? Practically perfect in every single way. Well, you better not fly away when the winds change. You can't leave me to suffer through all this homework by myself. <laughs> I laugh at this and look down at the textbook in his hand. It's his English book. Ah, Creative Writing 101. Should be bored out of my mind 101. hey -o. Having trouble? Yes! And you are going to help me, Miss Ace, this course last semester. I find myself laughing again. <laughs> fine, fine. But only if you help me with calculus. <laughs> sure. Calculus is easy. This making up worlds and stories every two weeks with minimum word counts and a minimum amount of characters is exhausting! I feel well on a spiritual level. <laughs> I'm like, ah, calculus? Perfect. I'll do that. Make up a story? Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. I'd rather do four calculus courses at once than continue this class. I agree. I think you're the only person who thinks that. No, he's not. I agree. Doubt it. Fine. How about this? Let's trade homework assignments. You do my calculus, I'll do your writing assignment. Deal. Oh, if I have to think of one more character backstory, my head is going to explode. <laughs> I laugh again and hand over my laptop. Will sits down in the chair next to me and opens it up. Rather than focusing on the screen, his gaze finds mine. I know that look. The luck that can see straight through me. Seriously, though, how are you feeling? I told you I'm fine. Mira, I visit you every single day. I know when you're having a good day and when you're having a bad one. Aw, oh, you visit every day. What's wrong? Is a nurse bullying you again? Are you stressed about this calculus course? N no, I'm not having anyone bully me. I'm fine, 
Really? Then, is it your parents? <laughs> it's natural that he would think that. After all, the third anniversary of their death was a week ago. It's ironic that I may be... Dang. Nope! I don't need to think about that. I just need to enjoy my time. I don't want to tell Will that I'm worried about my health, or that Jay has ruffled my hair twice, or that the nurses are looking stiff and worried. I don't want him to worry about me. I don't want to cause him the same pain that I experienced. I can't hardly hide anything from you, can I? Considering you are a huge part of my world, I'd say no. Honestly, I'm a little sad. I think it's impossible to stop missing your parents, but I'll be okay. Someday when you get discharged from the hospital, we'll go visit your parents. How's that sound? That... That sounds great. Thank you, Will. And I'm sorry for not being honest with you. This part I say is a silent prayer as if to ease my own conscience. I look out towards the window to try to keep from crying. I think, within myself, I know that I'm not going to get good news. And soon. Will had to leave for football practice a little while later. I sit in the room looking out the window. Just like every day, I'm watching the world go by without me. Good afternoon, Lily. Hello. Tamaki! I wasn't expecting to see you today. Did you have last-minute deliveries? Something like that. The hand he was hiding behind his back appears along with a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Uh-oh, this is gonna be the guy for me, isn't it? Just a little something to brighten your day. They are beautiful! Thank you so much, Tamaki! I take the flowers in my hands and smell them. I love your theme song, by the way. Their sweet, gentle aroma instantly calms me. You didn't come here just to give me these, did you? Uh, is that wrong? <laughs> did I do wrong? I can't stop myself from smiling. Not wrong, but if you keep bringing me flowers all the time, I'll get spoiled. I'm okay with that. You say that now, but you may regret it. <laughs> I'll take my chances. I've known Tamaki for three years. He's a florist who makes frequent deliveries to the hospital. Consequently, we met because of my parents. I still remember the bouquet that he delivered to me after they passed away. Deep purple irises melded with queen of the night tulips. Baby's breath sprouted amidst the dark arrangement, giving it a gentle softness. It was beautiful. So beautiful that I broke down crying right in front of him. I thought I had scared him away with my outburst, but ever since then he surprises me with flowers. I'd offer for you to sit, but I think I already know your answer. I can't stay for too long. I know. You're a busy man. You know, you don't have to come by here if it's too much trouble. I don't want to be a burden to you. Lily, I come here because I want to see you. You are not, nor will you ever be, a burden. Oh, you call her Lily? Ah, my heart. You're really kind, Tamaki. I'm just... Tamaki looks down at his phone for a moment. Uh, I've got some work that I need to take care of. Oh, okay. I don't want him to leave yet. I don't want to be alone again, but I can't be selfish. I give him a smile and cuddle the flowers closer to my chest. Thanks for coming by when you're so busy. Have a great rest of the day and be safe. <sighs> you haven't seen the last of me. I'll be back later this afternoon to visit you. Yay! What? Tamaki, you don't have to do that. I want to talk a little more. You're not looking like my usual cheerful girl. Is it really that obvious? Yes. I guess I'm not able to hide it as well as I thought. Not many people can hide things from me. Especially those I care about. I'll be back to see you before visiting hours are over. Okay. Thank you, Tamaki. He gives me a gentle smile and leaves the room. I'll be counting the hours.
After Tamaki left, the nurses came and took me for some heart scans. I tried to ignore how tense they looked, but now that I'm alone, it's hard to do. I look out my window and see people walking by. They all have their own lives. Their own adventures. I wish I could be free to do the same. Miss Lovingston? Lovingston? He never calls me by my last name. Two other doctors enter the room. Ah, that's why he was being formal. Their faces are stoic and grim. A look I've seen many times, but towards other patients. It's never a good sign. Dr. Hartman, is everything okay? Miss Lovingston, I'm afraid we have some rather troubling news. I take a deep breath to prepare myself. These conversations never end well. Your heart is not functioning at full capacity any longer. It's shutting down. Hey, you can't just say... It's okay. I'd rather hear it as black and white as possible. Honestly, I'm terrified to know, but nothing is going to change the facts. My heart is shutting down. Yes. So... What are my options? At this point, a heart transplant is the only option. The good news is that we have received a match for you, so we will be able to do the transplant. How much time do I have? For the procedure to have any chance of success, we would need to perform the surgery in the next month. And even then, it would be very risky. My chances of survival? A palpable silence hangs in the air. 20%. His words weigh heavily on me as I try my best to process everything. It is a very risky surgery, but without it, you have six months at most to live. You came here today to get your consent. My consent? The tone of my voice betrays my emotionless exterior. It's filled with sadness and desperation. It hurts. I feel like I want to cry, but I manage to hold it in. My gaze is drawn to the world outside my window. Only a 20% chance to live. Very well. You have my consent. On one condition. I have lived most of my life in rooms like this one. I haven't experienced many things. So, for this month, I want to live my dream. I want as much freedom as you can possibly give me. Everyone is silent. As I thought, it's too much to ask. Very well, Miss Lovingston. Think about what you want to do, and then let us know. We will try to accommodate you as best we can. Really? Thank you so much. Deep down, I know why they are allowing me to leave, but I'm still relieved. With that, the doctors turn and leave. Only Jay stays with me. Hey. You'll be okay. I'm not going to let anything bad happen to you. Although his voice is comforting, I can see the waves of turmoil in his eyes. More than likely, I won't be okay, but... Yeah, you're right. I'll be okay. Thanks, Jay. He ruffles my hair again, further confirming my thoughts. Jay only ruffles my hair when he's trying his best to hide how bad it actually is. Get some rest. It sounds like you have a month of crazy adventures ahead of you. That I do. I force a smile as Jay walks out of the room. Once alone, I let my smile drop. 20% chance of success. That's with the donor heart. I curl up in a ball and grab the picture of my parents. Mom? Dad? I may be seeing you soon. I'm so sad. I feel blank. Almost like all of this isn't really happening to me. If I only have one month, one month to do something I've always dreamed of, then I need to make up my mind. What is it that I want to do? Save here for quick access to the root choices. That is a great little note. I'm a big fan of that. Big, big fan. Ooh. 
Do I want to live a normal life? Do I want to travel? Do I want to share my story? Have an adventure? Fall in love. I want to kiss, kiss, fall in love. For me. Chapter one. I don't know who that corresponds with. Jay's point of view, is that what that said? Ooh, we have a diary? Wait, what is that? Oh, this is nice. Oh, I like this. Jay Hartman, born July 29th, 27 years old. My doctor. Jay's an amazing doctor and friend. Chance of success, zero to 40%. Hmm. Entry one. One month to live. I can't believe it. Jay has given me a chance to experience my dream, though. What more could I ask for? I will always be indebted to him. Okay. Three years earlier. It's my third day on the job with Wellston Memorial. I'm finally beginning to gather my bearings and adjust to the workload. One thing is for certain, there is never a dull moment here. I don't know what to do anymore. A nurse walks in and places a tray of uneaten food on the staff room table. Is it Mira? Yes, she is refusing to eat. I have to force her to take her medicine. She's getting weaker by the day and nothing anyone is doing is helping. Hmm, is this when you first met her, doctor? My chair creaks as I turn towards the two nurses. They both stare in surprise when noticing my presence. Dr. Hartman, I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't have talked about this. It's fine. Mind filling me in on the details? Room 202, Mira Lovingston. She's Dr. Bravin's patient. He nicknamed her the glass-hearted girl because her heart is so fragile. She's a hospital baby. Practically lived in them since she was born. She's always been very compliant and a wonderful patient. But her parents were recently killed in a car accident. Ever since, she's stopped taking care of herself. It seems she just doesn't have the will to live. Hmm. Does she have any extended family that you could contact? None. Her parents were all she had. I feel my heart tighten at that. This poor girl. That leads to a complicated situation. May I see her chart? The nurse takes out her tablet and begins pulling up the patient's information. She hands it to me with a complex expression on her face. She comes by the name Glasshearted Girl, honestly. Her heart is incredibly fragile. The strain of not eating or taking medicines will wreak havoc on her body in no time at all. I feel a sense of urgency arise in me as I leave the staff room and make my way to room 202. I knock on the door to room 202, unsure of what I'm going to say or do. <sighs> this person isn't even my patient. They aren't my responsibility. I have no reason to visit this person yet. I can't seem to stop myself. Come in. I hear the softest voice granting me entry to her world. Oh, there she is, our girl. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it definitely wasn't this. This is Miss Lovingston? She's beautiful. Much more beautiful than I would ever imagine. Even in the midst of grief, she still has this glow about her. Dang, Doc was smitten right from the get-go. She's breathtaking. Good afternoon, Mira. Good afternoon. Honestly, props to him for sounding like super calm when inside he's like, <gasps> she's beautiful. My name is Jay. I'm a new doctor here at Wellston and I thought I should introduce myself. Nice to meet you. Her voice isn't just soft, she sounds weak. As I walk closer to her, I cannot help but notice how small she is. It's extremely apparent that she has not been taking proper care of herself. An overwhelming urge to protect her arises within me. How are you feeling today? I feel fine. Liar. There is no way that you feel fine. From what your chart is showing, I would say you are feeling the exact opposite of fine. My heart tightens at the sight of her. She just looks trapped, staring out the window. Her eyes look lifeless, devoid of any emotion. I'm overcome with the urge to see her smile. Mira? Hmm? Want to go for a walk? 
I managed to convince her to get in the wheelchair, and together we made our way out into the garden area of the hospital. So I need seen our girl in sprite form out there in the world. She takes a deep breath, and I can't help but smile. It's been so long since I've been outside. Really? How long? Maybe two months. Two months? Dr. Bravin doesn't like me going outside. He says it's too risky. That's ridiculous. Being trapped in a hospital room for days on end. On top of losing her parents. It's no wonder her depression is at the level that it is. Sorry, Jay. I managed to keep my thoughts to myself. Would you like to sit over on the bench? I'm already in a wheelchair. I know. But I'm sure you get tired of sitting in one of these things, right? She is silent for a moment before looking up at me and nodding. I can't help but find her response adorable. I help her up. I help her... Help her to sit down on the bench, maybe? I sit on the opposite end to give her space. For the rest of the time that we spend outside, she doesn't say anything. Just looks around, watches the people, and enjoys the small breeze. We repeat this routine for the next few days. Every passing day, I see the slightest of improvements. She has begun eating again. Only eating a small amount, but it is progress. Today, we find ourselves sitting outside again, in silence. Dr. J. Yes? What is your family like? My family? Hmm. I'd say... My family is lively. I've got three younger brothers. My mom and my dad have been married over 25 years now. We all get along fairly well. Do you go on trips together? We used to. We would take yearly camping trips or a road trip. We did lots of traveling for my brother's soccer tournaments. All my life, I've always dreamed about being healthy. I always wanted to experience how a family normally lives. I wanted to fall in love and get married and have a family of my own. I wanted to give my parents healthy grandchildren, but what's the point now? My parents are gone. My health isn't getting any better. The thought of just giving up. Before I can stop myself, I take her hand in mine. Mira, I'm not giving up on you. You will get healthier. You will be able to make that dream a reality. I promise. You have a long life ahead of you. One that will make your parents happy and proud. For the first time, Mira began to cry. As I held her fragile frame in my arms, I made a vow. I will not let her die. I will make her dream a reality. Present day. Are these the results from today? I'm afraid so. I look down at the chart in my hands. All of the numbers seem to shoot out at me like flashing warning signs. It's not good. It's not good at all. Damn it. Why did this have to happen right when we get a notice of a match? Good morning, Jay. How are you this morning? Morning, Moran. I'm doing okay. So, I was wondering if maybe we could grab something for lunch today? Just us? Oof, bad timing, girl. Sorry, I can't. I've got some matters to attend to. I turn my attention to the nurse. Have Dr. Seguin and Dr. Braven made it to the hospital yet? Ah, Braven, not Bravin. My mistake. Yes, sir. I believe they are in their offices. Dr. Moran looked over at the chart in my hands. Oh, looks like our little glass-hearted girl is breaking down. Her comment irritates me. Not if I have anything to do with it. I quickly leave the nurse's work area and make my way to the doctor's offices. Oh. Alright, turn that page! Do we have anything new in the diary? No. Okay, just wanted to double check. The news is hard to take. I lay in the hospital bed, hearing the beeping sound of the machines. My mind is swimming with all different thoughts and questions and worries. 
However, one thing remains a constant. My dream. All I ever truly wanted was to have a family. To fall in love. I guess that just will not happen. My mind goes back to when I received the news. I tried to keep myself composed. I mean, this news was bound to come sooner or later. I wonder if I was convincing enough. I tried to seem optimistic so Jay wouldn't worry, but was I able to hide it? The door to my hospital room opens. It's probably one of the nurses coming to check my vitals. I know that I should turn to greet them, but... I just don't have the energy. I don't want to see their sympathetic expressions. I just want to escape. Mira? <laughs> Jay! I thought your shift was over! Oh! He's out of his doctor's outfit. My voice catches in my throat as I see him standing in front of me. Jay is in normal clothes. What? Doctors have normal clothes? I don't think I've ever seen him without his doctor's coat on. It's almost like he's someone else. Someone from outside the hospital walls. <laughs> yes, it is. I've come as a visitor, not as your doctor. There's something that I need to ask you. He comes over to my bedside and sits down next to me. Do you still have the same dream? Ooh. Man, he remembered, he remembered. And I mean, she did literally just say, I was thinking about my dream. Cute. I'm surprised that he remembers. Honestly, I feel a little embarrassed to admit it, but... Yes, I do still have the same dream. Jay seems to let out a breath that he had been holding. He looks... relieved. Would you like to live with me for this month? What? Huh? You said that you wanted freedom. I've managed to call in a few favors and take off work for the month. Uh, yeah, mm hmm I'd like for you to come stay with me on my vacation. Only if you want to. If you have already decided on some other plans, then... No! I, I mean, I haven't. Um, are you sure you're okay with me staying with you? I've never been more certain. What about your girlfriend? Would she be okay with it? I wouldn't be a burden to you? Wouldn't you rather take your vacation with someone you care about? I say this under the assumption that he has a girlfriend. I mean, he's a successful doctor, and he's extremely handsome, and he gives head pats. It would be impossible for him not to have a girlfriend. Girlfriend? I don't have one. What? You don't? You seem surprised. I just... I figured that you would have someone special to you. I do. A certain glass-hearted girl who has a wonderful dream. You are the only girl in my life, Mira. Yeah, I mean, considering your dream was like, I wanted to fall in love, get married, and have kids. And the <laughs> his lead-up to him asking you to spend a month with him was like, do you still have the same dream? Yes? Great. Would you like to live with me for a month like we were a married couple? Um, sure. I feel my cheeks flush at his statement. I know he doesn't mean it in a romantic way, but I still can't help but feel embarrassed. Oh, do you? Do you know this? Do you know this for a fact, Mira? In a matter of moments, everything has changed. I've been hit with so many different emotions. Still, I have to wonder... Would it be okay for me to try? Could I experience something similar to my dream, even if it is just a fantasy? So, will you? He looks at me with expectant eyes. If I'm going to die, I might as well take his hand and begin to live. In all honesty, I knew my answer the moment he asked. Of course, I will. I was hoping you would say that. I've already had the temporary discharge papers drawn up. I just need you to sign and then we can go. Man, boy was confident. Butterflies flutter in my stomach as I take the papers and begin signing. At last, I can be free! Free to smooch. Oh, I love her 
her sweater and her little ribbon. Oh, she looks so cute. So cute. We leave the hospital and head over to Jay's apartment. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. His apartment is small, but it's also very welcoming and cozy. It will be a little cramped, I apologize. I'm a single guy, so I didn't really feel the need to rent a big apartment. No, I think this place is great. It's very comforting. I think if it was much larger, it would feel intimidating. Then I'm glad it can make you comfortable. Jay puts my small bag of belongings down on the coffee table. I only have one bedroom, so I want you to sleep there. I will sleep out here on the couch, no objections. I want to argue, but if I have learned anything over the three years that we have known each other, it's that he is just as, if not more, stubborn than I am. Okay, I'll admit defeat on this. Thank you. You're welcome. Jay rolls up his sleeves and looks in the direction of the small kitchen. You hungry? Actually, I could eat. I'm starving. Well, we have to fix that then, don't we? I nod my head somewhat bashfully. This all feels so surreal. Okay, I'll start making dinner then. You're going to cook? But aren't you tired? You've been working all day. Cooking relaxes me. It's more of a hobby of mine, so I don't mind at all. Go ahead and make yourself at home. I'll let you know when dinner is ready. With that, Jay walks back towards the kitchen, softly humming to himself. This is so strange, seeing him outside of a hospital setting, but I could really get used to it. I look over at the bedroom where I will be staying. I guess I should go put my bag in there. Ooh. Fancy. Like the rest of the apartment, Jay's room is clean and cozy. Medical books are sitting on a bookshelf on the opposite end of the room, and a small plant is by the window. Though, the plant looks like it has seen better days. Poor plant. He has a twin-sized bed and a small work desk, which I assume he uses for research. I lay down onto the bed. <laughs> this is so much comfier than hospital beds! I feel like I'm sitting on a cloud! This is incredible! I'll never want to go back to a hospital bed again after experiencing this. I stare at the ceiling. The room is so quiet. It feels foreign not hearing the sound of heart monitors and squeaking tennis shoes. This isn't a dream, right? The blankets are soft against my skin. Their warmth feels so inviting. If this is a dream, I don't want to wake up. I feel my eyes growing heavy. Would it... Be okay to rest them just for a minute? The hospital seems like a distant memory as I take in the comfort of this place. It's so peaceful. I just want to sleep. <laughs> you look so comfortable. A soft, gentle sensation runs through my hair. What was I doing? Oh, that's right. I'm at Jay's house. I want to open my eyes, but I also just want to rest. You must have been tired. I was. You must be so scared. I am. Mira. A gentle warmth on my cheek brings me back. Hello? I open my eyes. Good evening. G -g 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 Good evening. Jay! Did you have a nice nap? Y yes, I did. I'm so sorry I fell asleep. There's nothing to be sorry for. You've had a very long day. I'm honestly glad that you feel comfortable enough to rest. The, the bed was just so comfy. I'm glad. Jay asks if I'm ready to eat, and I nod my head in response. Out on the table is baked salmon with steamed rice and vegetables. It's a healthy meal, but looks very delicious. I take a bite of the food, and the flavor hits me. This tastes amazing! I'm glad you like it. I love it. You're a great cook. This really is a dream come true. I take another bite of the salmon, savoring the bite. I cannot stop myself from smiling. That smile makes me want to make you dinner every night. This boy is badly in love. <laughs> For some reason, I can't look him in the eyes right now. 
Don't know why. I know he is just being nice. He's always like this at the hospital too, but... It feels so different, sitting in his home eating dinner together. Thank you, Jay. Hmm? What for? For giving me these moments. I never would have been able to experience this if it wasn't for you. I don't know how I can ever repay you for everything that you have done for me. Right now, and, well, since we met. The only thing that I need is for you to smile and be happy. If you are happy, then that is all that matters. I fight back another blush at his comment. Are you finished with your plate? Yes, I am. I stand up and go to grab it, but Jay moves it away from my reach. You cooked dinner and are offering me a place to stay. The least I can do is wash the dishes for you. You are my guest, and a guest who needs to rest. Jay, I thought you said that you aren't my doctor right now. I don't need to be a doctor in order to tell you to rest. It's common courtesy. This man is so stubborn. Family doesn't need common courtesy. <sighs> what did I just say? Uh, on second thought, I think I'll go rest like you recommended. I want to run away. I cannot believe I just said that. I turn around to make my retreat, but a large, gentle hand stops me. You're right. That was my mistake. I'm treating you as a guest. One I shouldn't be. N no it's okay. I just got carried away. I don't even know why I said that. I mean, we're not... You're not... I hate that I'm stammering like an idiot, but I can't form coherent thoughts. His hand feels so warm on my body, it's distracting! I'll tell you what. Why don't we compromise? I'll wash you dry. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Jay lets go of me, and I immediately miss the warmth of his touch. I really need to control myself. Still, washing and drying the dishes together... I'd never thought I would experience this. I can't keep myself from looking at him. He's so tall and handsome. He's kind and successful. How does he not have a girlfriend, or at least someone special to him? It's probably because he spends so much time taking care of patients like me. My heart aches a little when thinking that. He deserves to find someone. Even if I can't find love, I hope that someday he will. My mind is filled with many thoughts as I continue to dry the dishes. After the chores, we find ourselves in the living room. Jay had told me to sit down and wait for him. I wonder what this is about. Okay, I'm trying to give you as much freedom as I can, but I must insist on a few checkups throughout the day. I understand. Jay smiles gently and places the stethoscope against my chest. It's cold. I'm going to listen to your heart now. Okay. I feel nervous for some reason. Jay has done this plenty of times, but... Sitting in his living room? Alone? He moves the stethoscope to different parts of my chest. Each time, I want to suck in a breath. I never noticed how intrusive this is when wearing regular clothes. He has to move my clothes aside to place the stethoscope against my skin. It's so different from a hospital gown. Your heart is beating pretty steady. It's sounding good. Phew. The only reason it's sounding good is because it is racing! I wouldn't dare say that out loud, but I definitely thought it. I'm glad. Huh? I was worried that without being at the hospital, your heart would get worse. I'm relieved to see that you still seem to be doing well. Jay. Jay takes out my medications and hands them to me. Make sure to take your medicines. I fight back a grimace when looking at the handful of pills in my hand. I know that I have to take them. After all, I have taken them for years. Still, staying in this house and being outside the hospital makes me feel like I'm living a normal life. Seeing the countless pills kinds of br kinds of kind of brings me back to my reality. Just a few more weeks. 
Then you won't have to worry about taking as many pills. You will be free. One way or another, I will be. I instantly regret saying that out loud. Jay is trying to cheer me up, yet here I am being negative. Jay is silent a moment before moving in front of me. He places his hands on mine. His warm hands envelop mine. I'm not going to let you die. I promise. His voice is filled with sincerity. A sincerity that brings me a slight amount of peace. Every time he says that to me, he says it with such certainty that I want to hope. You don't have control. I believe you. Jay gently places his hand against my cheek and stares into my eyes. You will live the life that you have always dreamed. Just promise to fight with me, okay? Okay. I will do my best. That's my girl. His girl. <gasps> my heart tightens in my chest when hearing this. Ooh la la. Ooh. All right, and that went to chapter two. I don't know what the dog, eh? <laughs> Ooh, what a thunk it. I finish dabbing on my lipstick. I can't go in and see my man without it after all. Jay can't take his eyes off of my lips whenever I wear it. Uh-huh. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you're going to have to just keep on dabbing that lipstick, girl, because that is going to be it for me today in this gander. I enjoyed this so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, if you would like to check out the game, I have a link to it down below on Steam. There's also a demo that you can check out, but the full release is out. It came out last month, uh, beginning of February. So yeah, I, w I hope you guys do check this out because this is, it's beautiful. It's like a tragic beauty. And I love the characters. Um, I love our, our protagonist she's i just want to give her a big hug <laughs> and the doctor's like really sweet I, i'm just liking the relationship that's developing between the two of them so far i'd love to see how she gets along with the other guys especially like the billionaire and the pop idol that's that's interesting like with the doctor she has a pre-existing relationship so that makes sense i could see the best friend thing coming in but the others i'm a little like hmm how's that going to work out so yeah, if you would like to find out, or you would like to continue the Doctor's story, then go check these guys out. Thank you again to Corinna and Eternal Love Studios for the key to this. I had a wonderful time. I loved the art, the music, the sprites. The voice acting was fantastic. Yeah, just all around a great time. All right, with that, I'm off. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.